Hello and welcome back. And who is this on my left, hopefully on your side of the screen? It is Tom from Lawrence Systems. He's come to join us here on the channel. And today we're going to talk about the arguably dicey subject sometimes of uh, camera licenses on network attached storage devices. Because a lot of you, when you're looking at your first NAS from whatever the brand you're going to go for, we're going to try not to mention brands too much, but I think inevitably we're going to have to. Um, a lot of people just aren't aware about not only the existence of camera licenses, but the structure that live within them. But for before we go any further, um, Tom, I mean, let's face it, everyone on the channel probably knows who you are already, but if you'd like to introduce yourself, who are you, Tom? I'm here from Warrant Systems, as I introduce myself on my channel. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, IT professional working in the industry since 1995, so I've earned some of this gray hair. Uh, I've had my business since 2003, so 20 years of doing this, and of course, I've touched a lot on NAS storage, and more importantly, we're talking today surveillance systems. We are a installer and integrator, and we've we used a variety of systems, and the licensing part I don't I just get to buy it once is how it used to work. It's not exactly how it works anymore. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I think um, when it comes to Synology, certainly when we're talking, because I mean, Synology is one of the, the bigger brands that you, you know, fit out for your customers. Um, do you generally find when it comes to people looking at the surveillance licenses that you hear from them going, oh, wait, I've got to buy those or they're pretty au fait with it at that price point, And that's kind of enterprise level. There's kind of a split here. So when you're selling it to a business, you put it together as a package. So they may, if they want to look at the line item, sure, it's it's going to be on the invoice. There's going to be, you need X number of licenses, one license per camera, roughly, uh, depending on which technology you get, because some of them come with at least a couple of free licenses. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the DIY people or other installers you're consulting with, they get upset. They're like, what do you <laughs> mean licenses? You know, I bought the NASs. Uh, doesn't it just, you know, include support for all this? And especially if you go all the way down to the home lab and the, you know, home users buying it, they are really anti-license uh, quite a bit. And there's this balance you have to keep. Someone has to write this software. Someone has to take the time to put it together, code it, keep it up to date and keep it secure because this is probably one of the most common use cases is to publicly expose it. It's not that you just want the cameras. You want to watch them when you're not mm. in the office and telling people, use a VPN on your phone so you can view the cameras remotely. Yeah, I mean, I could tell mm. people that, but they're not going to listen. They're going to go, I just want to expose yeah. the port, uh, which means you want to do segmentation. But it also means the software has to be developed and secure. And software is hard. It's, it's more complicated than ever. Threat actors are really hammering away at these things and finding every angle they can to get in. So you have to say, all right, who's taking the time to deal with all that, make it secure. And at the same time, if they see something else, the new shiny over here has a new feature. Well, other companies have to add that new shiny feature too to keep up. Mm. So this is where those licensing fees, you kind of have to sell it as a justification to them going, someone's got to pay to develop this unless you know you can find someone because everyone's been chasing the holy grail of, isn't there some free open source tool that will do all of my uh, stuff? I've not seen an open source project get off the ground very far out of a, of a, they don't make it past like the hobby project phase where there's like, cool, it kind of can show some cameras and maybe display, but it's gone through no security vetting. It's not commercially supported. It's one person, uh, college project, spare time. Maybe they get two or three people to work on it and then it falls off. Mm -hmm. This brings us all the way back to the business model of selling licenses. No, uh, the features that you touch on a really good point there, because when I, I talk about quite a few different NAS brands and they've all got different positions. I think Synology include, as you say, predominantly two licenses. QNAP include eight licenses, but their enterprise level product has got subscription annual licenses, which, by the way, has really pissed a lot of people off. Then you've got some of the other smaller uh, kind of micro brands that are right with two to four licenses there. But the feature set of the Synology platform is why everyone keeps flocking back to that, because they have really, really, really developed developed in that up to the point of course we're going to talk about it now the fact they've got cameras this isn't one of their yeah. cameras this is a rio link but unfortunately <laughs> i still don't have their camera here if you've found my other video you'll know about that and um, and with their cameras they're the first nas brand unless you can tell me different they're the first nas brand i know that have ever rolled out their own cameras and their own cameras depending on how old oh, you're about to is there another one that i've not yeah of? so if you look at some of the what I would say with, okay, Hit Vision, I don't know where they fall really. I'm, I look at them as more of an end user brand. Yeah, you can get a whole Hit Vision system, but mm. you can also take a look at the security of some of these systems. There's also been the kind of, they're all made by the same manufacturer, but they all get different names on them, mm. like those kits that you've seen sold. Stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
man, those, which are pretty much always after a couple of years, part of some botnet, if you left it publicly exposed, those <laughs> things are terribly insecure. They make up most of the botnets because, yeah. you know, home users bought them and, and did them. And that's part of the problem. Like people will go, well, I can purchase these one time and have them. But man, we have had to deal with so many problems where there was, they were hacked and they were deleted. They were part of a botnet. And usually they just end up being slow, which is always weird. They actually, sometimes the botnet will leave them working, but they work slowly because they're mm. well sending out some botnet thing. <laughs> so this is where you got to get something a little bit more professional. And I think with the you know security landscape, like I mentioned, it's becoming where even home users or especially the homeland people going, yeah, maybe I want something a little better than that turnkey cheapest box kit that sold with four cameras and uh, some weird NVR with a really weird ActiveX plugin it needed to load mm -hmm. to make the web page work. <laughs> Those things are still plugged in somewhere. I'm positive. But yeah, so there's some of those, but Synology doing it on the more professional level, I think is a big change. I mean, Unify has their system as well. And technically, Unify, when people say they don't have licenses, I'm like, oh, the license is there the same way the license is going to be there in Synology. It's just part of the camera yeah. cost. They just The cameras on average for Unify are more expensive than on a similar equivalent camera. And it only in Unify uh, NVRs are locked to Unify cameras. They don't work with outside parties. Mm. Therefore, technically, there's a license in there. <laughs> it's just not visible to you as a line item. It's just part of the camera purchase. I mean, when it comes to Synology hardware, one of the things I didn't touch on on the video, maybe it was a question of phrasing or narrative, but on one of the points in my video, I said, oh, Synology cameras, they include a camera license. But of course, Technically, they don't include a license. They just don't need one. Cause it's, and there's actually, right. there's t I know that seems like a, just two ways of describing the same thing, but I don't think it is. And, and one solution, perhaps, who knows, that Synology, like they do with their DVA, the DVD analysis series, where they include more licenses there, home users, two cameras, you know, two camera licenses front and back, fine. But once you get to a certain level, maybe the XS series, it seems strange to me that they wouldn't include four camera licenses or something like that. Yeah. And it's a strange a dichotomy of their pricing of their license in there. And they do have other licenses for other stuff like uh, the, the virtual machine software, the pro version of that, even XFAT licenses, which I surprise still exist. Um, but with the camera, can you think of any other way that they would, could readdress that balance to maintain funding, if you will, or subsidy of that software? Because I can't. The only thing I can think of is include more licenses in the more expensive box. Is. That's literally the only idea I can think of. Yeah, and I think I, I'm actually shocked that they do this is one that their licenses are perpetual and not renewing. Because if you deal with some of the other enterprise ones that we do, we have some school districts that are using some of the like exact vision and some of those systems that you may not have heard of if you're in the consumer market, but you've definitely heard of them if you're an enterprise market. And then you have a couple of the clouds uh, systems out there as well. Everything is constant renewing licenses, number mm -hmm. of cameras, number of NVRs. I think some of them we haven't have license on how many people can view it at once. Like they just they figure out every way to uh, license you to death. And I think that's where Synology is doing a good job of being, you know what we're going to do? Perpetual licenses, because that will when the renewals come up, people can say, do I still need this exact vision system or do I go with something that's not going to have this constant cost? Because mm -hmm. the problem with the licensing costs is they're not guaranteeing you a price for X number of years. It's this is your yeah. renewal for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, next year, we'll see. Um, <laughs> it's probably going to be more. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to replace everything, right? So you're probably going to have to pay whatever we've decided the next license fee is because the cost of the switching cost is hard once you built this infrastructure and everyone's trained on using it. So I hope Synology doesn't make any changes, at least to the perpetual side of it and the transferable side. This is not something you get with other companies is that you can transfer the licenses. I think Synology's niched themselves in really good here. Um, I just hope they don't niche themselves out of it because yeah. surveillance systems especially are longevity. You're looking, I mean, I can see most servers are going to have like a five-year life cycle, but you look at a camera system, they don't replace it till it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And once you've installed 1080 cameras, do they need something more? Maybe they need 4K cameras, but once that need is met and they go, I can see the people coming in out of my office, I can see the people around my house. I can't think of, like, I wouldn't jump. Right now I have some 4K cameras around my house. I have no reason to go to 8K. Are they cool? Yeah. Will they help me any? No. So I, I won't upgrade till that thing dies. And mm -hmm. that longevity means that's a long time before Synology gets another piece of money from those people. And at some point, they will obviously stop updating Synology surveillance station for that model because it'll fall out of support. Yeah. Maybe that prompts someone to buy a new one, but more than likely, it's going to be kind of, it's a detriment to Synology. So I'm hoping they don't go, wow, we've saturated mm -hmm. the market too much. Um, 
the, let's just hope they don't get there. For now, oh. I think they're doing pretty good. You're right; they could increase. Uh, we wouldn't. We all be happy if there were more licenses available, though. <laughs> just make it makes me ever so slightly concerned that after this video, there's going to be some product manager at Synology going, "Bloody hell." He's got it, uh, but hopefully that's not the case. And hopefully they don't ever put a license on um, Active Backup Suite, because seriously, how that is still oh. existing without a license, that's another one that just blows my mind. Don't get me wrong, if me you're too. watching this Synology, don't stick a license on that, but just mwah, chef's kiss. But do you know what? I think yeah. we've covered everything with licenses today. We've got a few yeah. more little videos like this coming up. Um, Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, um, great. Always fantastic to get another viewpoint on these things. But apart from that, thanks for watching, everyone. Check out Lawrence's channel, uh, Tom's channel, obviously, Lawrence Systems. Um, buy him, etc., etc. You know the score. Um, and we'll see you next time. Cheers, Tom. Thanks.